Hey guys, welcome back to The Shaving Tolson. I'm your host, Timmy Two Shaves, and tonight we're gonna be getting into some interesting products. Some products that you might love, and some products that you might find that you hate. But we're gonna put all that to bed tonight. We're just gonna be having some fun. Um, and I want you guys to join in with me. So whatever you see me do on tonight's episode, if you can, try to participate, do it. Let me know in the comments below how this went for you. Because honestly, I've tried this and I'm not gonna mince any words. We're using mugs, shaving, a mug, Williams mug shaving soap tonight. Um, and I purchased this at my local brick and mortar store for a buck 29. So super cheap, super cheap. And a lot of people say there's a reason for that because it is a very cheap product. It performs cheaply, etc. But I have found pretty much a surefire method for me that works every time to get me a consistently creamy, uh, dare I say it, luxurious lather. Something that I really look forward to and enjoy. And I was even commenting on Instagram today that using William's mug after you found out how to dial it in is kind of a guilty pleasure. You're kind of in this, in this select group of people that can really get this soap to work. And I've had friends, uh, fellow wet shavers that have tried this before and it hasn't worked. I've released a video in the past about how to bowl lather this soap. But tonight, we're actually going to get into using this on a face lather, which I found gives me the most consistent results. So, without further ado, let's get into the shave. So one of the things that I've started to do is my little wee Scott, which is one of the features of today's episode is I pre-soak it, like you're supposed to do with animal hair brushes, but then I use the water that's in here, wring it out just a little bit, and use that to apply the water to my face. Gets it plenty hydrated, ready for the shave, and that's all there is to it. I'm not sitting here splashing water in my face, getting it ready. It's just a simple thing that appears to have worked for me. It's not something that you have to do. And it's not something that's going to be specific to getting Williams to lather the way that you want it to lather. So let's showcase to you guys what we're using in tonight's shave. So I have, this is pretty much a classic setup tonight. So I have my Old Spice shaving mug. It's nice because it's got these little, little made ridges in there. So it keeps the puck in place. Now, this puck has been significantly used, so it's not keeping it in place as much as it used to. Um, but it's it's a wonderful mug. This is a lot better than a lot of the other bowls and stuff that you're going to be putting these pucks into. But honestly, I've been just holding the puck in a lot of my shaves and lathering it that way. Nothing special, no specific equipment acquired on your end. You can just literally hold the puck and build and load your lather that way, and then you're actually going to build it on your face. So you're loading it via your hand with holding the puck, putting it in a bowl, whatever you want to do. Um, but again, I want these results that you're going to find to be easily found. Something that you don't need special equipment to do. And I'm just using the Wee Scott because it's just a wonderful little brush. And I want to showcase it and I want to sing praises for it because it's something that I feel like um, goes unnoticed by a lot of the wet shaving community because everyone wants the biggest brushes. I mean, I've got a really big brush up there, the Razor Rock Hulk, which is huge. It's wonderful. It's, it's a fun brush to use, but I barely use it. Um, this one gives me a lot of control on where I want that lather to go, and it doesn't overuse the product. Now, when I'm testing out product and just having fun with it, um, yes, it's gonna use a lot of that product. But this is a buck 29 for this soap. Again, that I bought at my local brick and mortar store, so nothing crazy there. Now, something that you're gonna need to do with William's mug is you do need to pre-soak it. So while I'm going over what we're using tonight, I just put some water in there. Um, I'm letting it soak because the key here is moisture, it's water, it's all in the prep, I feel like, with William's mug. And I feel like uh, Mitchell's wool fat is the same way. It's all in the prep. If you do the prep wrong, you're gonna have yourself a, a bad time or not as optimal results as you could get. And tonight, I guarantee you, we're gonna get a nice creamy lather from William's mug, of all things. So, what else are we using tonight? I just picked up a, a, a Gibbs 1517, and I'm gonna start out on the lowest setting that it has available here. I am using a modern DE blade, and I'm gonna get into how I did that on today's episode as well. 
And then we're going to be following up with something that you can also buy locally. And this is very well known in the wet shaving community. This is Nivea Men Sensitive Soothing Post Shave Balm. And it's in a really nice, this is not plastic, this is like a milk glass. So very similar, the same stuff that you're going to find here. But this stuff, I've been using it on a few shaves and I really like it. Um, if you're looking for a product that is great, it's not going to break the bank, take a look at Nivea Men. It's nothing to scoff at. Modern products, you know, and stuff are nothing to scoff at whatsoever. Um, and I really like it. It's, it gives you also that old school feel. But anyway, I've been talking for so long. Let me re-soak my face a little bit. And we'll get started with the shave. So we've had this soap just soaking in water. We're going to load this brush. A good 15 second load is a good amount of time. I'm not keeping track of the time right now because I'm talking to you guys. But generally speaking, a 15 second load is all that it took me. But if you want to err on the side of caution, again, it comes a lot in the prep that you're doing leading up to applying it to your face. So pre-soak your soap and then give it a decent load time. At 15 seconds, if you feel like that's not working for you, do 30 seconds. But 15 seconds is more than enough for me. I'm not wanting to build my lather in the mug itself. I'm gonna be building that on my face. And all the results that I found here are consistently on the face, not in a bowl. So just go ahead and make sure to keep that in mind. The thing I like about the Simpsons Wee Scott is it applies the lather exactly where I want it to go and nowhere that I don't. And you guys can see here, it's got some pretty decent splay for a little 14 millimeter knot. And these aren't gonna break the bank. If you wanna get into Simpsons brushes, look at this. Now you can see that I went in a circular pattern on my face. Again, we're gonna be looking at something that's light and airy. That's okay because that's not where we're gonna get the creaminess. Where we get the creaminess is the paint method. So we're utilizing two methods here. Face is hydrated, circular motions across the face, just doing it that way to build that soap up and then we're gonna paint it on to get the creamy finish. And I can tell you guys, there is absolutely nothing airy about this when you use this method. Nothing whatsoever. Honestly, one of my pet peeves on a lot of videos that I watch, and everyone's got their own approach to it, so there's really nothing wrong with it. It's just kind of one of those things. It's when you just see guys just running the brush all over creation on their face, like they have to build this ridiculously huge lather, and that's fine. You know, do it the way that you want to do it. But if I can maintain a nice, clean, even line, my face and let's do that so again you're using the circular motions to build the soap on your face you're using the painting method to get the creamy consistency that you're gonna want to want it's got plenty of water I can feel it. it feels really nice and hydrated now we're gonna get into the shave so you guys can see here that utilizing this method there's nothing to it I've replicated this with other badger brushes. I've utilized synthetics. I've utilized bore. Same exact method was replicated amongst each one. So not a big deal whatsoever. Now the Gibbs. This is a really cool razor. It's one of the reasons I like this razor over other vintage razors out there is not only is it a really cool adjustable, but it is a solid brass, except for the handle. There's a little brass insert in here to screw everything together. But by and large, this thing is all brass, chrome-plated brass. Um, so if your finish ever wore off, you could get it refinished. Nothing to it. And modifying blades to fit in here, because this does require a proprietary blade, you can probably see these little posts here and here um, that do require the blade to be modified somewhat. What I've found that works best, you're gonna find methods all over the internet for how to use a modern Gibbs something that you can quickly do at home. You don't have to buy a hole punch or anything like that. 
is just cut the tabs off to the side. Now you still want enough on there to connect the two halves together, but just if you meet the edge here and the edge down here on both sides, and you cut that, you're still gonna have plenty to connect the blades together. And then it's basically being press fit into place. And all you do is you leave this a little bit loose, you push the blade with your fingernail to where you need it to go to make sure the blade's aligned, you tighten it down, you're good to go. And we're gonna start off using this on the lowest setting. Now this is my first time using this razor, but I'm using an Astra Superior Platinum Blade. Oh yeah. I'm sure you guys can hear that. Again, first time using this razor. But I'm using a blade that I'm very familiar with though I am being drawn to the Voskop blades. This thing is crazy smooth. <laughs> um, I'm actually really surprised. I'm trying not to act as hype beast as possible, but this thing is incredibly smooth on the lowest setting, so the least amount of blade gap. Totally worth its reputation. As a smooth shaver. And you can hear when I'm going against the grain, of course there's still stubble there. But it is smooth. And this is 100% 24 hours worth of growth here. And there is almost no better feeling than when you can take a vintage razor made for proprietary blades and modify a modern blade to get it to work. The feeling is indescribable. It's, it's a lot of fun. That's why I like using these vintage razors. And I've seen a lot of guys that say that their biggest regret later in the shave game is that they invested in vintage razors when they can provide you just as good, if not better a shave than some of the modern made razors using our techniques. I will say one thing that you're going to notice with Williams is it does dry out pretty quickly. Um, so if you're sitting here talking on a video like I am, you might find that it dries out pretty fast. But when you're using it as a daily method of shaving, no problems whatsoever. I like the head's pretty slim. It just feels really nice. The weight is definitely top heavy. The cap is definitely heavier. I've heard there's some things that you can do to change that by buying like an all brass handle that some do make. Um, I'm trying to find one. I think it'd be cool. And I visited all the forums. And there are places that you can go to buy a new spring in here if your spring's rusted or you don't want to spend the time to restore that spring or maybe it's lost its springiness. Um, there are places, of course, that you can go to have them replated or have them custom finished however you want. Um, there are ways to replace the little red dot indicator for what adjustment that you're on. There's a very... very loyal following of Gibbs owners out there 
and they want to know how to you know keep and maintain their razors and it's not difficult and disassembly and reassembly of one of these razors is a cinch and again I don't feel like I'm going to cut myself at all. And it's on its lowest setting. But it feels incredibly close. Like, incredibly close. I would say if you've been on the fence on owning one of these, own it because it's a piece of history. But I own razors to use them. I don't own them just as have, you know, sitting around on a shelf looking pretty. Or for bragging rights, if I can't use the razor, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip it, I'm going to get rid of it. But generally speaking, there's not a razor out there that I can't get to work. Generally speaking. And you guys saw how much growth that we had on there. I could probably get a little closer under my nose. But for the time being, we're going to let it let it slide. Gibbs, great first impression. Um, you guys know, if you see me on Instagram at all, the Wee Scott, highly underrated. One of my favorite brushes of all time. I love the size of it. There's no brush that comes close in comparison to size. Though part of what I want to showcase tonight is my mail calls. So we'll be getting into that after I put my aftershave on. But you guys can see here my Wee Hive. We'll get into that more here in a second. But let's go ahead and use some of this aftershave balm. And there is a very, and I'm talking very light scent that I actually find quite pleasant. But I find that this stuff goes on very nice. Absorbs into the skin pretty quickly. Not the quickest thing, not as quick as like um, Zingari Man, the recovery splash or anything like that, but I mean, I think it feels great. And with my skin as dry as it is, stuff like this is what I want to see. So any of those of you that are alcohol sensitive or just want to find some really good products nearby that aren't going to burn your skin or anything like that, um, the Nivea Men Sensitive Soothing Shave Balm really excellent choice. I've been using this on several shaves and I really like it. It might become kind of one of my um, signature uses, something that I constantly go back to. So, but let's go ahead and get into the mail calls, right? You guys are curious to see what other things that I received. So you guys already saw that I received the Gibbs. Really, really cool. Let's get into some of the brushes. So this is by Smiles for Miles. You guys can see the brush here really really well finished there's a signature coin i didn't even know he was going to be able to get a coin on a brush this tiny um, but it's a little itty bitty brush closer in comparison to my simpsons special one which is a travel brush uh, really nice i call it the wee hive because i've got the wee scott i've got a wee hive um, i'd love for him to make me a brush that looks like the paladin style brushes this is not a paladin this is a style brush that i'm going to showcase here in a second but make one that's a miniaturized version. I think that would be wicked. Um, but I really, really love how this feels in hand. I love the way that you can already see that I've been testing it out with various uh, soaps and stuff, breaking it in as you want to do with most animal hair brushes. Um, but I love this. I love working with him. He's, he's a fantastic guy. If you haven't found him, look for him on YouTube and look for him. I think he's on YouTube, but he's definitely on Instagram. Um, he does accept custom orders like this little uh, Wee Hive. Um, there's some really, really cool brushes that have been released um, that I would highly encourage you guys to go take a look at. And I know we're running longer on time today, but this isn't my typical review stuff. This is just a fun uh, shave showcasing some fun products. What we also have here is this purple and gold flake brush by Turn and Shave. This is my first Turn and Shave brush, and this is my first knot that is this crazy dense. Um, it is insanely dense. Um, I was testing this out with a few soaps earlier and it's definitely got a very, very, I mean, it's the softest knot I've ever felt in my life. Um, the This um, Heritage Knot 
incredibly dense, gel tips, feels great. Um, when you soak something like this in water and you really get it going, it's, it's, it's gonna show you that it's nice and it's dense and it's a great knot and it's gonna feel pillowy and soft. And this is a great introduction to gel knots if you want a nice gel knot. Um, I really, really like this knot. It's probably one of my favorites in terms of the knot and I really like the handle. But this is, I, I didn't even know. Look at that. Look at how dense that is. Um, and it's just, it, it holds a ton of water. These gel tips feel insane. Um, I've never felt anything like it, ever. But I've got tons of other things to utilize, um, tons of other things to showcase to you guys in videos. I know I've been pretty much talking throughout this entire thing and we're going close to 30 minutes. So I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Thank you guys, as always, for joining in and sitting in on these videos. I'm sure you guys don't mind the occasional lengthy video. If you don't want to stick around, you can always leave. That's perfectly okay. But I appreciate the love and support that you guys have provided over the years. And I'm looking forward to releasing more content here on The Shaving Tolson. Thank you guys so much. Talk to you later. Peace.